In this video, we're going to look at the Analyze Spectrum tool in Audacity, which is slightly different from the Spectrogram tool that we've already discussed. So we're looking again at the first few seconds of 2016 in the GOES 13 data. Let's zoom in. Picking up from our last video, we've got the normal file up here in waveform view and in spectrogram view, the difference file where we've changed the settings so it's not all horrible and pink and red everywhere so we can actually pick out the features. Let's remind ourselves what this sounded like. So we can see from the spectrogram view, there are some uh, periods which have well-defined frequencies, which you can see uh, as the bands along here. So we've looked at the spectrogram view, looking at it qualitatively, but what we can use is the Analyze Plot Spectrum tool to do some quantitative analysis. Now, at the moment, the spectrogram view is muted, so we're actually going to select the stuff in the waveform view. And you can see these are fairly sinusoidal waves. Let's select this small period here. If we go analyze, plot spectrum, we can see something that looks a bit like this. Now, you can see in here, this is the spectrum view. We can change the window size just like we could with the spectrogram view. And we can also change between linear and logarithmic frequencies. I'd recommend using logarithmic frequencies. Why is this different from the spectrogram view? I mean, it is essentially doing a very similar calculation, but it's doing it for a well-defined period of time that you need to select. And it averages over all the windows of that size over that selection period. Say we were to increase the size of the windows, uh, you can see it gets a lot noisier and we can see becomes a bit difficult. So actually for this wave, I would reckon that that's probably too small. 512 is about right. And you can place your cursor over it to see any peaks present. So the biggest peak here is at just over 1100 hertz, uh, and you can measure the level of it as well in decibels. We'll talk about decibels in a different video. But what we can also do is measure at the place of our cursor what the amplitude is in decibels. So one way of characterizing a peak within a spectrum like this is to look at its peak frequency and amplitude and then get a measure of the width of it as well. Now dropping to half the power is equivalent to about minus three decibels. So what we'd want to do is go from minus 10.3 to minus 13.3 approximately. And they're at minus 13, and that is at 1062, and we do the same on the other side, and that's 1273. Now, this is not the only thing that you can do on the Spectrum tool. There are some other things as well. There's autocorrelation, which we can see there's a peak here, and that again corresponds to about 1180 hertz. There's a cube root autocorrelation, which is just a slightly different flavor of autocorrelation. And again, that picks that out. And there's also this enhanced autocorrelation, which you can see has much better defined peaks. And again, it's giving a similar sort of number, though you might want to change some of the settings. But how are these things actually worked out? Let's tell you. Okay, first up, the spectrum is really just something known as a Fourier transform. What that does is it tells us how to decompose any sort of signal, say one that looks a bit like this, into a whole load of different perfect sine waves. So we could describe it as this plus this plus this, etc. An infinite number, in fact. And that's how you get, as a function of the frequency of those sine waves, what the amplitude, or technically the amplitude squared, which is power, is equal to. And we may see something that looks a bit like that, where these are the frequencies of that original signal. However, that's not the only way of trying to work out the frequency or pitch of 
a signal. We can use another method known as the auto correlation. And as the name suggests, this looks at how a signal correlates with itself. So what it does is it takes our original signal, like so, and then applies a slight time shift or lag to it. So something like that and sees how similar the two signals are once they've been time shifted. That means you can build up as a function of the lag, the correlation. Now, obviously it's going to be most similar to itself at zero lag, but for a perfect sine wave, what we'd end up getting is something that looks like this. The reason it decays slightly in time is because we have finite amount of data. So to get the frequency, we just find that first peak. That's how the standard autocorrelation works. There's a slight difference with the cube root autocorrelation. All that does is uses a slightly different method to be able to pick out the frequency more clearly. So the peak is more well pronounced. That's all that does. But the enhanced autocorrelation does something slightly different. It takes that nicely peaked autocorrelation like so, and then tries to remove all of these sort of repeated peaks and these negative values. So firstly, we'll get rid of the negative values like so, and then it tries to take away any repeated values by subtracting away multiples of itself. The process being that it will take away this, it will take away anything else like here, and all you'll be left with is just a positive peak at the fundamental pitch or frequency of the signal. And so if you had multiple signals with different frequencies, say two different notes, then this should be able to pick those out distinctly. That's all it's doing. Okay, I hope all of that helped. There will be more how-to videos on this channel. Uh, so do make sure you subscribe to get stuff like that. And do ask questions in the comments below if you don't understand anything I said or you found something and you don't know what to do. I'm here to help.